right, thank you, JP. Well, this one was plenty tough enough for the United States needing to get to the 82nd minute to get that goal. It's their 11th of this tournament. First shutout of this year's edition of the Gold Cup for the United States. They are the only team to win all three group stage games. They take Group C, and they are next in action Sunday, live on Fox, as they take on El Salvador in Baltimore, the other game from Baltimore. Honduras taking on Costa Rica. Cuba, what a performance earlier today. They move on to the quarterfinals, take on Panama, and there's Mexico and TNT Saturday in Atlanta. Breck Shea was one of those guys who had a bad outing in yep. his last game. A lot of, not pressure on him right now, but an opportunity for him to kind of get back in the good graces, get back to being a regular. Coming off the bench today, yep. may not have been a pretty goal, but a goal <laughs> is a goal, and this has to do a lot for his confidence and Jurgen's confidence in him as well. And I, I think the confidence that was instilled in him by Jurgen Klinsmann, but let's not forget that, you know, Sean Johnson just saves the day, ball pops out of there, Corona makes a great decision, Finds Landon immediately as this ball finds him. Watch him now. Watch it, this now. is it. Now, like, get on your horse and take off. Landon, that's just experience. That's, that's the whole package right there. That's not the best shot in the world, guys. He should probably should have scored, but I'm telling that you now, that, smile. that makes or breaks his tournament. Because yeah. if he misses this, I mean, he's got the urgency to push forward. It's that standing save. I think it was like 15, 19 seconds from there. However, that can set his destiny in this tournament. Absolutely, right. and that would kill his confidence. You know, the fact that he had an, another opportunity to come in and play, I mean, Jurgen is just giving him chance after chance. So I'm happy that he could turn things around. Uh, and the other part is, he's working back to fitness. He wasn't there. I mean, you talked to Jurgen Klinsmann about this. So they've been putting him through his paces. Maybe he was a little tired in the last game, mentally and physically. Tonight, fresh, you come from off the bench and uh, produce. I, I, I That's all this, matters. and I think for Jurgen Klinsmann's point of view, this was his best performance as a team. I think they look solid. The goalkeeper come in, the teams they played against. At no point was I too worried about the US. It looked like I could step up a gear. Yes, there'd be people saying, however, that they could have done better here or there. But I think as a performance against who you're playing against, I think they dominated the game. Yeah, I mean, I think in the second half, they completely and totally turned things around. You started seeing the midfield getting more involved, spraying balls wide. I mean, it's a completely different team. The defense did well. I mean, he was saving the goalkeeper I and mean, all around. It was a great performance at the end. Landon Donovan, two goals, three assists thus far through the Gold Cup. That assist. Yeah. Is me, why he's on the U.S. Men's exactly. National Team. Do you know how many other players, uh, maybe of lesser experience, would have taken a touch and then the play would be a nothing? To, to recognize it as quickly as he did, to play it into space. What are you looking at? No, I'm just, that part? I, I can't. I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, he's a good player. He's probably one of your best players. Mm -hmm. All that's been questioned about him is his attitude. And he's answering people quite. Yep, yep. Whether it, we know he's got the ability. If he took an extra touch and missed kick, I'd say, hey, that was bad play by Landon. But he does what he does best. He's a, he's a top player. Yep. And I think from the US point of view, as long as I, he now is part of the team, he has to then... I see there was a corner, and Torres is taking it. Normally, Landon would take it. He's now bought into the role of being part of a squad. And that's what the coach has led down to him. Yeah, and I think that the biggest thing, too, is is that Jurgen? you know, he, he gave him an opportunity, but he, he made it really hard for him. Yeah. And I think Landon has come in and he's done everything that Jurgen has asked of him. That's, that's the point. I mean, it's the first time in a long time that they're not asking Landon. They're actually saying, do you want to be on but this team? But and, well, is you, that not you right? understand the decade, the, the last decade that we've been through with him, this is a situation where he has to be a part of this team now. He wants to be a part of this team. He's saying all the right things, doing all the right things. That assist was fantastic. But that's what, that's what you need. Yeah. That's what Landon Donovan needed to say, you're not above the rules you're one of the players and if you do well and you buy into it we've got a chance of going a long way in this competition and in the world cup i think that benefits him so yeah. far yes so far this totally. tournament has gone it's gone perfectly to plan for jurgen klinsman he has had landon donovan earn his way back into the camp the way jurgen wanted it when landon street, accepted it and there is no doubt there is no doubt that Landon is back with the U.S. men's national team. There were those who figured, how would the team embrace him coming back? I think it, we were a little bit like, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Now it but is, Rob, that's what it's, you want. it's a non-conversation. You, you want yes. Brett Shea to be under pressure to take that chance. He's done it. Now that's going to be confidence for him. You've asked Landon Donovan, do it. You've done it. You've asked a goalkeeper to come in. He's done it. That's what a coach wants. Right, but the Isn't other... it? When you've played, when you've won Olympic gold medals, doesn't the coach put responsibility on you? Absolutely. Every single one of the players, they, they give us challenges. And what does that do to you? Gives you confidence. 
And that's what we're saying. Boy, you guys can throw Coach stuff Barton out. over How here. I love that? it. Uh, plenty more coming up on the post game show. A lot of post game options, reacts coming in right now. Well, that's why I let you guys talk. Sometimes I decide to cut you off, but today you guys were on your game. Sorry about George that. George Stone, <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, coming your way Saturday. Double bill live on Fox Soccer. Panama and Cuba start things off. L3 set to take on Warren Barton's team, Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> then on Sunday, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, the U.S. versus El Salvador from Baltimore live on Fox. And then Fox Soccer will take over the coverage of Honduras and Costa Rica. The eight teams are set. We know the path to Chicago. The U.S. still celebrating in Hartford. The postgame show on the backside. You've been watching the CONCACAF Gold Cup on Fox, presented by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Eighty-second minute after a huge run from one box to the other, Breck Shea puts in his first international goal. It was the only goal we saw tonight. It's enough to see the U.S. win Group C, so they are set to take on El Salvador Sunday in Baltimore, live on Fox. You see the eight quarterfinalists and how the road to Chicago shapes up. We welcome you back to the post-game show here on Fox Soccer. The marquee match, really in Group C, was the last match played, period, in group play. The U.S. taking on Costa Rica, a lot of history between these two nations. We go back to the big World Cup qualifier, the Snow Bowl in Denver, Colorado. Would revenge be a factor? Who would be a factor? How about Landon Donovan and Breck Shea in the end? Zeros on the scoreboard. Driven by Borges. Bicycle kick over the bar and wide as well. What an attempt though from Junior Diaz. Stuart Holden, long ball attempt. Out of the box is Pemberton. He's left the net empty. Campbell's going oh, for a card. It's got to be a red card. It's got to be yeah, a red if, card. If you handle the ball outside of there, and this can change the game. Yellow. Was it for a foul? He hit his own guy. Oh. If he handled it there, is it? See right I mean, here. He uses it. He's that's outside that's, the that's, box, that's obviously. Red. That's red. This has got to be a red card. An important free kick now. Discord and Torres. Torres will get it over the wall. Pemberton made the save. There's a rebound for Donovan. Best chance of the night. And normally, Donovan's money from there. A great opportunity. I'm almost at a loss for words on that situation. You usually see Landon Donovan with the ball bouncing right there have a clean strike at that. And we saw for the U.S., this is where they struggled a little bit. He's off a set plays. Just a little bit. Borges. Back post area, the header, big save, Johnson. There's still a loose ball in the box. The U.S. has to deal with that, and they finally clear it out. Best save of the night for either goalkeeper. Right there, Sean Johnson. Upfield, can the U.S. convert at the other end? Donovan for Shea, walking into the box. Shea shot, he scores in the U.S. leads. Shea from Donovan, but you gotta figure. It all started with Sean Johnson in goal. Good run. Good finish. So the U.S. wins Group C, the only team to win all three of their group games. And the U.S. moves on to the quarterfinal Sunday. They will take on El Salvador with Landon Donovan. Grant Wall caught up with Landon post game. Landon, the U.S. team here won with the help of Breck Shea and Sean Johnson on these big plays and the decisive play of the game. How important is it for them after having some ups and downs with the U.S. national team over the years to be involved in this? Well, in all my experience uh, in this tournament, you need a bunch of guys. And uh, I know Breck felt bad about his performance the other night, but full credit to Jurgen for giving him a chance again. Full credit to Breck for being ready to play, and he made the play that made a difference. I thought Sean was great in goal. And as the tournament goes, we're going to need more guys to step up. You're influential in this game. At what point do we say Landon Donovan is back with the U.S. national team? Uh, I'm trying to play each game to get an opportunity to play the next one. And um, I think if uh, my performance keeps getting better, then I have a chance to be a part of this team long term, which is my goal. Thanks, Landon. Back to the studio. Thank you.
All right, gentlemen, thank you. You see who's behind us, our referee expert, Dr. Joe Macknick, joining us right now. And Dr. Joe, uh, in the 55th minute, Costa Rica keeper Patrick Pemberton came out, collided with this player, and then made a save with his hands outside the box. After some back and forth by the official to which pocket he was going to, he eventually went with yellow. That was the what call, sir? Well, I'll tell you, our referee, Courtney Campbell, is going to have a difficult time explaining this decision. He definitely blew the whistle for a handball to stop play. He now has to decide whether it was a shot at goal or did the handball deny a, an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. I think the only way he can explain his call is that by using his hands, the goalkeeper outside of the area saved a pass to an opponent. I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. Dr. Joe, thank you as should always. should have had a red card here. Yep, I agree. Should have been a red card. I think everybody here agrees a red card. And remember, if there was a red card, that obviously would carry over to the next game for Costa Rica. So a big plus for Costa Rica heading into that match versus Honduras. Where does Costa Rica go from this performance? They did some tweaking to the lineup, Eric. You know, they were the second team coming into the day. Is this, has, this a big hit to them, or is this something they can easily recover from? Well, I, I don't think... It, they're going to easily recover from it. They're going to get a familiar opponent in the next uh, in their next game. But I, you know, looking at that, the guy that made the save on Torres' free kick shouldn't even been on the field in the first place. Uh, yeah, it was a mistake, and and, and the, I would I would credit the Americans for their resilience to dealing with the fact that the disappointment of not having the opportunity to play against ten to still address the game the right way. Costa Rica, different different story. I think they're they're looking at this as a okay, it's a little blip. We knew what we had to do. We're through. We're okay. This tournament's not over. But uh, I, I'm still happy to, as an American to, to see us win. Funny feeling that the U.S. will be seeing Costa Rica Again, in a few yeah, days, I, I, I maybe a, a week from tomorrow in Dallas with the semifinals. Let's go back to that play, Warren, the 55th minute. We're all watching this and saying that this, this has to be a red, but we're going to go to the goal first. And Breck Shea, you love what he does. Yeah, you can this. see him here attempting to clear the ball. And then just to have this desire here, we speak about Landon Donovan. He has the awareness, he's always looking okay. around, always spinning. But then now, then he kicks into gear, great desire. And again, this can make or break you. Look at it, he's gone the length of the field, acres of space to play the ball in there, but perfectly weighted, good touch. And I'm saying it, Eric, that's a good finish. It, well, it, because it what went in. I, I'm, I'll go back to when, when, <laughs> when the there was a little bit of a delay b before Breck Shea came out on the field. And Eddie Herzog, who was, was the assistant coach, had a little word with him just before he, he went on. And you could almost tell that it was like, when you get your chance, go. Have an impression on this game. Have a positive effect on this game. Because the last one, we all know it wasn't so good. And, and, I, and I think when you look at that goal, a lot of guys would have probably been, you know, thinking, okay, is this my big opportunity? And he didn't miss. I don't think it was the best shot, Warren. I, I don't... I think if he could have it again, he probably would have tried to put it around. And I don't know whether I'm here, but with Landon there, don't, why don't you make a statement and say, I'm back. I've never been away. You left me out. I went off. I did my... Yeah. But I'm back. I'm wanna, I want to play. Now, put the pressure back on a coach. I've answered the questions. He's answered the questions, have about his attitude, his temperament, going to another level. I've done it. Now, now you've got to play me. Yeah, I mean, he keeps getting these questions after the game, and I just have to laugh. I just want Landon to be like, I'm, I'm back. I don't know what more I possibly yeah. have to do to continue getting these questions. He's proven it. He's got a good publicist. <laughs> it's a great save as well, you know. The question's a magnificent save. And then to have that desire, because for Brett, he could quite easily just stood in the box and said, my confidence is not great. I had right. a really bad game at the weekend. I'm better off just keeping out of it. No, but he went. Yeah. And that's, that's when a player's lacking in confidence, you start thinking about things. He's better when he just play because, intelligent-wise, picking areas, I don't think that's Brett Shea's game. He's natural, what he does. If you think, you stink, right? Sometimes it's just... Think too much. Just go. Yeah. Just do what you're good at, and Brett Shea's good at going at people. And you're right, the U.S. only needed a draw. They didn't have to go for it. They didn't have to search yep. for that goal, but they went out and got it, and that's all that matters. The U.S. moves on to quarterfinal action, but it's two games on Saturday, first from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Panama Group A winners in the opener. Mexico runners up in Group A to take on Trinidad and Tobago. Both those games live on Fox Soccer. Sunday, we start on Fox from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, home of the Ravens. The U.S. men's national team taking on El Salvador. And then Fox Soccer will take over for Honduras and Costa Rica at 6 p.m. Eastern. When we return, we show you how Cuba earned their way into the quarterfinals. Wonderful pictures.
The early game from Hartford had Cuba and Belize, two teams that had really struggled through group play, but both teams knew with a four-goal victory, they could move on to the quarters. Martinez looks for a lane. Tries to get around two defenders and lets it go, yes! The beautiful strike from Ariel Martinez and the breakthrough for Cuba. Takes a slight deflection on the way in and beats goalkeeper Woodrow West and Ariel Martinez, great goal taken from the number 11. Martinez, Ariel Martinez, still going. Took a big second touch, Martinez, yes! And Cuba one step closer. Second of the game for Ariel Martinez to make it 2-0. Well, very similar to the first goal, it's just Martinez isolated, 1v1, 2v1, 3v1, and no immediate pressure from the back line for Belize. The caution here is to Ian Gaynor. And if it is his card, that's his second yellow of the match. And indeed, the confirmation, Ian Gaynor is sent off. 84th minute, taken away by Cuba. Opportunity here, Martinez! Yes! And with seven minutes and added time remaining, one more for Cuba would do it. The hat trick for Ariel Martinez to make it 3 nothing. Yoel Colome for Martinez. The man with three goals today. Gets the cross away. Perez drops it. Marquez and the finish. Incredibly, Cuba leads by four and the celebration is on in East Hartford. Well, the buildup comes on the right-hand side through Ariel Martinez, the goal scorer. Ball whipped in. Referee keeps his flag down on the service. Cuba labeled mission impossible at the start of play today the four goal victory over belize to advance to the quarterfinals of the gold cup second time cuba has ever moved on to the gold cup quarterfinals the last time they did it 10 years ago 2003 dr joe magnick our referee expert checks back in oh dr joe there were a couple late offside issues in that one and maybe the second one was a make good call perhaps well i'll tell you rob first of all in order to make a makeup call you gotta you gotta realize you've made a mistake on the first call <laughs> there are two there are two offside decisions here that are you know disallowing the first goal for offside and it's it's it, it was a good dis, it was a good goal and then the player is in an offside position when he receives the cross field cross field pass here um this is our friend from saint kitts inexperience rearing its ugly head again and dr joe here is the winning goal should that have been offside yeah absolutely when the cross field pass is made the player receiving that pass is in an offside position before heading it down uh, dr joe why are we seeing these mistakes well, inexperience is a, is a big key here. You know, CONCACAF started this tournament with three of its best officiating teams at the Under-20 World Cup in Turkey. So they had to bring to the Gold Cup some rather young and inexperienced crews, and so far they haven't stepped up. Dr. Joe, we appreciate the time, as always, to get experience. you got to get game time, but... <clears throat> close. Right. I, just I, I agree. mean, there was another one. He's had the same... Goal disallowed. He's looking along the line. You've got to be uh, able to make a, a sensible, easy decision because it's a turning point in the game. Let's talk about Cuba, though. Despite the call, or no calls, they move on to the quarterfinals, and they are set to take on Panama. And, and, and Warren, you've been saying you, you feel an upset in the quarterfinals. Is that a Cuban upset now, courtesy of what they did, or is this maybe just a little too much for them going forward now to Panama? I'd love to be able to say, I think Cuba... But uh, we'll be able to turn Panama because I'm not sure. I think Panama have had their best game, which was against Mexico opening game. I'm not sure whether they've got another upset in them, but I can see them possibly got enough quality against Cuba. I, I, th I think Panama is a better team, but I want to see Martinez play against Panama. That's what I want to see. I mean, we're going to find out if this guy's good enough, and that's 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 going to be cool to watch. Martinez had his Wheaties today. You know, he was on <laughs> fire, but I think it's going to be tough for them to have two impressive games like this in a row. I'm going with Trinidad.
Here we go again. Stay <laughs> loyal. On. Stay loyal oh, to oh, your God. dark horse. Good no, man, no, Muffin Lord. Oh, muffin Lord. Oh, God, I could, she's there. Oh, yeah. really? That's what this is about? That's what about. And the two. And Shaka. Oh, okay. And Dwight. All right. Just, what about Kevin? Just dropping a few names there. Yeah. We're just looking for another vacation outlet. We're going to return more post-game sound from the U.S. The States victorious over Costa Rica 1-0. More U.S. national team action coming to Fox in September on the 3rd. The brand new Fox Sports 1 will televise the U.S. women versus Mexico from Washington, D.C. It will mark the first international game on America's newest sports network, and it will be far from its last. Ah, the celebration in Hartford. Get on up, outlaws. The U.S. drops Costa Rica again by a 1-0 Score line. Group stage in numbers, 44 goals scored, 11 of them by the U.S. Almost two and a half goals per game. The U.S., the highest scoring team. Top scorer still, Chris Wondolowski. Costa Rica, Panama only allowed one goal. The states have allowed two. Once again, we remind you, Saturday, Georgia Dome, Panama starts things off. The winners of Group A, the second place team in Group A, El Tree. Mexico taking on TNT 5.30 Eastern, both games live on Fox Soccer. Sunday, we'll begin our day over on Big Boy Fox, as we like to call it, Baltimore, Maryland. Gus Johnson, Eric Winalda with the call of the United States and El Salvador. And over on Fox Soccer, they'll have the nightcap, Honduras and Costa Rica. For more on the U.S. big victory, we send it back to Hartford. Grant Wall with the keeper, Sean Johnson. Here, Sean Johnson, huge play on the decisive sequence in the game to get that stop. How gratifying is it to you to have such a positive moment that you can carry forward with with this senior team? I think it's great. I think it's great, especially for our team momentum going forward into the next round. Uh, the guys battled hard and uh, you know, just did my part to keep them in the, in the game. And, and we went out there and got a goal and got a result tonight. You could have advanced as the group winner with a tie here, but you got the win. How much more important is that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's huge. Our mentality was we wanted to come into this game and get a win and, and nothing less. And uh, we were able to do that tonight, and I think the boys should be proud. I'm proud of everybody that played tonight and all the guys who supported and we came away with the victory. Back to the studio. All right, gentlemen, thank you. How nice to see Sean Johnson have a good performance in a big-time atmosphere. And uh, 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 it's El Salvador again. I mean, go back. That was the team that, that we didn't get into the Olympics on his mistake against El Salvador. So... Gratifying for him, not just a big game, but uh, a good memory. He ain't going to play anyway. Yeah, exactly. Let's stick with Rondo Territory. I like it. I like it. He's going to play against El Salvador. I love it. Yeah, I, think, I, I, I think, you know, he said he's number one. He got a chance, but I mean, now, now they're going to face El Salvador. He only has a, a bad memory in, in his mind. So this will bring back some, uh, some good thoughts. So they're going to face El Salvador Sunday. Jurgen Klinsmann faces some questions right now. He has 24 hours to adjust his roster by four players, up to four players, if he sees fit. Heather, coming off this performance, and what you've seen throughout the course of this tournament, it's tough to forecast what Jurgen's thinking, but what are you anticipating, if anything? Well, as far as replacing the players, I'm, I'm still sticking with the original ones that are, haven't played so far that can go back with their MLS teams. And then I think it all depends on Gooch. See how he's feeling. Can he contribute? Can he play? If not, bring in another defender. But I do think you need to bring in at least one solid defender. Uh, does Omar Gonzalez, does Beezer, do they need more top-level international competition in your eyes heading into those qualifiers coming up in September? Because that is the bottom line. I would say yes. I mean, you're never going to say no to that. I think the, the, the idea has to be to strengthen this squad in, in the next couple of games. I'm with her. I mean, I... Jack can, can go back to Sim Corey, can go back to his team. They're, not, they're probably not going to get any time at this point. If they were going to get any time, they it was in it. the previous what, games. What's, what good will it do to the squad? You see afterwards there, they're all in the middle. It's a squad of getting everybody together, having this good feel, good fact. You just said it there. It's a great squad. We've got people standing up. If you're going to get experience, you might as well stay there. Just that, that, that would be my just Why stick out then that bring in someone, unless there's an injury? I've never known that before. You, you, your coach has made a decision to, to get you there. Why then say after about eight days, sorry, you're going to go, we're going to bring someone it's else options in? What and good injuries. does it do? It's options and injuries. I mean, if guys can't go... They're not injured. Uh, well, uh, Gooch might be, and, and they're, they're, you know, we'll see where Gomez is. Would you like is. that? Would you have liked that? That you'd sat home, you've not been there at the beginning, and then all of a sudden they pick up the phone and say, you're going to come in now. Well, if, if I'm not playing, I'm not going to play anyway. You know, let, let me go prove it with my club. Yeah. Because it's a hard I thing agree. to do. And I, you, you got guys 
I think we saw it with Blas Perez, you know, going from club to country, club to country. Your club's mad at you because you, they've lost that game because they didn't have them. And now Panama's going and beating Mexico, and you didn't get to be a part of it. So it's problematic, and it's a bigger we'll find scheduling out. issue. We'll find out tomorrow yeah. what Jurgen does. Heather, I thank you say, for oh, enjoying us. Thanks for having Love me. Love having thanks you here. Thanks so much fun with we'll you guys. Back so anytime. Thanks. For Eric, Heather Warren, our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. Doubleheader Saturday, Doubleheader Sunday, the Gold Cup. Now it gets really good with knockout stage activity. Martinez again, and there is West. Let's it go, yes! Took a big second time. Martinez, yes! Martinez, yes! A hat trick for Adio Martinez. Dangerous ball, headed toward goal. There's a rebound for Donovan. Best chance of the night. Shea shot, he scores in the U.S. leads. Incredibly, Cuba leads.